Hi guys, today I'm going to talk about the best treatment for Lyme disease and you probably already know that that's a bit of a trick question because it's not a simple answer. I see a lot of people saying there is no cure for Lyme disease, there is no such thing as a cure for Lyme disease and of course there isn't. That's how it works with every single disease there is basically because human beings don't know enough about the human body. We only know a small, small, small percentage about how the human body works. Even the greatest scientists in the world, the greatest doctors that have ever lived, they don't know most information about how the human body and its systems work because it's so incredibly intricate and so incredibly complicated. And then if you add a really complicated infection, such as Lyme disease or Borrelia, into the mix, you have a disease that cannot be treated with one magic pill or one magic treatment. So if you came here expecting me to say that you just need to do this, 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 and you will quickly be cured, I'm sorry, that is not the answer. And if you're sitting there thinking, I don't have time to put into my treatment, you're not sick enough. Because if you were, you would be saying anything. Just give me anything and I'll do it. So that's the first thing that I want to say is that the body takes time to heal. When you get into a serious car accident, you don't arrive at the hospital expecting them to just give you a pill or treatment that will make you recover quickly and miraculously. You know that it's going to take months and months of rehab to recover. And obviously it's exactly the same way, if not more complicated, when it has to do with the interior systems of your body and an illness so complex as Lyme disease. Then something to bear in mind is that the tick that bit you didn't only have the Borrelia bacteria. Ticks carry a whole wide variety of different bacteria. So we all actually have different infections. We have different co-infections. We might all have the Borrelia infection and some of us might not even have Borrelia. We might have just the co-infections. But the co-infections can be just as damaging and just as destructive to the body. So that's also something to bear in mind that we're all infected with different infections that are working together to help each other out and to set up their colony and grow within our bodies and to weaken our immune systems so that they can flourish. Then also we all live in different environments and grow up in different environments. We're all exposed to different kinds of heavy metals in different quantities. We're all exposed to different kinds of molds in different quantities. We're all exposed to different kinds of foods and diets and lifestyles and all of these factors come into play because our bodies are weak in different areas and the infection takes advantage of that. And then also of course these pathogens are so incredibly intelligent. They've been around since before human beings and they are able to adapt and evolve. They hide behind biofilms, they hide behind brain barriers, they hide within parasites, which is another thing. We all have a different load of parasites. And I could go on and on and on. There really just are so many factors. And one of the main underlying factors is that our immune systems are all working differently and this very very much depends on pathogen exposure so the more pathogens you have been exposed to obviously the harder your immune system has to work this is viruses bacteria fungi and parasites the more of these you're exposed to the more your immune system is bugged down and then the harder your immune system has to work these things suppress our immune systems, especially Borrelia. It's a major immune system suppressor. So a lot of people say that the way to treating Lyme disease would be to treat the immune system and to get the immune system up. But very often, some of us are too far gone and it's actually not possible to build our immune systems up with all of these pathogens that are bogging us down. So we do need to address our pathogens. For those who are at the earlier stages of the disease, by all means, I say try the immune system route and 
there's a really, really good channel called Health Recovery by James, and I always recommend that. I'll put the link below. He gives some excellent lifestyle tips to boost your immune system and to fight chronic fatigue syndrome that way, which is actually just caused by pathogen overload. So I guess chronic fatigue syndrome and Lyme would go hand in hand, but chronic fatigue syndrome is not an actual disease. It just means that you have something that is causing this chronic fatigue for you, and you need to get to the root of the cause if you are too far gone otherwise boosting your immune system will do but if you've tried that and it hasn't worked it's because you have a pathogen overload that is suppressing your immune system and your body's fighting so hard so that's why you have no energy the pathogens also affect all the systems of your body they're on the brain they affect your brain they affect your mitochondria they affect every single organ and every single system in the body even your heart they can affect I have major issues with my heart going too fast and palpitations and pots and things like that all caused by these pathogens so what's the cure and what's the best treatment there are some people who will swear by antibiotics and they'll say that their antibiotic regimen is what got them better. And there are some people who will swear by hypothermia and they'll say that the hypothermia is what got them better, it was their miracle cure. And then there's other people that swear by herbals and there's other people that swear by the Rife machine. I say that there's no one treatment that fits everybody because our bodies are all so different and as I say we're all infected in such different ways we've had different upbringings we're exposed to different things and the infections are working in different ways in all of our bodies and there's so many factors that come into play so there's not one treatment for everyone that's the first thing I want to say the second thing that I want to say is just because antibiotics don't work for me now doesn't mean that they won't work for me at a later stage. Timing is also very important. And this is because sometimes our bodies become stronger and they're able to take the antibiotics eventually. Or sometimes we've done some work that allows certain treatments to work on us now. For example, we've gotten rid of our parasites and there's no longer Lyme hiding within our parasites and therefore a different treatment is able to work effectively on us that wasn't able to before. There are thousands of reasons and combinations that I could come up with. So remember that timing is also everything. Just because one treatment didn't work for you at one point, doesn't mean that it won't eventually work for you. So how do we find out which treatment is best for us right now? And how do we monitor our treatment protocol to make sure that we are doing what's best for our bodies? The best way to do this, in my opinion, which I have broken down from my experience of being sick since I was two years old, I'm now almost 30 years old, in March I'll be 30, and I've been searching for answers since I was two years old. I've had the privilege of meeting incredibly knowledgeable people, people who have learned so much about the human body and how it works in depth. It's absolutely fascinating. But the best way that I have found to work with your body to cure basically anything, any disease, is to let your body lead the way. Because your body knows what it's doing more than anybody else in this world. No doctor can tell you exactly what is happening within your body. Your blood can only tell you a tiny, 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 tiny fraction of what is happening in your body, even if you do every single blood test under the sun. Not all the answers lie within your blood. Your blood is only one tiny component of your body and its systems. And in fact, you actually have more lymphatic fluid in your body than you do blood. Where's the test that tests our lymphatic fluids and what's in there? So therefore you have to work with your body and this is not to do with your logical mind because if I think to myself now what's going on in my body right now? I don't know but my subconscious mind knows. My subconscious mind is controlling my heartbeat, it's controlling my breathing, it's controlling the minerals and vitamins flowing through my veins, it's controlling all of the systems that are just working in my body that I'm not even having to think about. There's something keeping me alive and controlling this complex, beautiful machine, and that is my subconscious mind. And the really cool thing is that we can actually talk to our subconscious mind. 
Our subconscious mind reacts and responds to true and false statements. So if there's a false statement made, our subconscious mind knows that this is not true for our body and all of the muscles in our body will weaken. If a statement is made that is true to our body, our subconscious mind will react by strengthening all of the muscles in our body. And this reaction happens when you make statements. So for example, if I were to make the statement, my name is Cape Town, the muscles in my body will weaken and I will be able to test those muscles to see if my body concurs. And then if I make the statement, my name is Kimberly, the muscles in my body will strengthen and I will see that that's a true statement. The same goes for if you actually put something on your body. So if I put my cell phone on my body, my muscles weaken incredibly because my subconscious mind knows that the EMFs for my cell phone are not good for my body. And then if I put a herb or medication or anything on my body that is good for my body at that time, the muscles in my body will strengthen. So if you have an antibiotic or something like that and you want to test it out, you can just put it on your body and test on your arm. And I highly encourage you to research the emotion code. It goes into great detail about how this works and it also will tell you how to muscle test. However, I don't recommend you start doing this on your own. I do recommend you seek out a professional experienced muscle tester because they've been doing it for years and years and years and they're very familiar with which muscle reactions mean yes and which muscle reactions mean no so I do recommend seeking out a professional at first just to be completely sure and then in the meantime practice on your own so that you can eventually become confident in what your body is trying to communicate with you but the best thing to do is to work with your body then obviously you need to touch on all aspects of your lifestyle. You need to look at your EMF exposure. You need to look at your heavy metal exposure, your chemical exposure, your GMO exposure. You need to look at the foods you're eating. Make sure that you're eating organic because that is very important. I will do a video on that. You need to look at the products that you're putting on yourself. I wear only organic makeup. There's so many heavy metals in makeup. You need to look at your hygiene to make sure that you're not being exposed to parasites. It's absolutely impossible to avoid parasites completely, but you need to make sure that you're taking precautions. You also need to make sure that you're not using products with chemicals like lotions, harsh laundry detergents, things like that. And you need to make sure that the environment that you're living in isn't mold infested. That's a big one as well. Mold and fungi is something that really affects our immune systems and the, and the systems within our bodies. So it's really hard to fight a pathogenic infection when you have so many factors at play. So it's really important to do a broad lifestyle change. And this obviously takes time, but it doesn't have to take so much money. There are natural things that you can do. There are natural oils that you can use on your skin. There are natural products that you can use for cleaning. For example, bicarb, vinegar, and lemon juice. Those are really highly effective cleaning agents. And your body will take a lot of time to detox. We are constantly exposed to toxins in the air and in things that we consume. So your body will take a very long time to detox and it may not feel so good. We all know that when we detox, we don't feel so good because your body is trying to get rid of a whole lot of toxins at once and your, your body has to work really hard to do that. So take it slow and make sure that you're making healthy choices and make sure that you're looking at every aspect of your lifestyle to see whether it is benefiting your health or not. Sleep hygiene is also a big one. Make sure that you are at least laying down in the dark at an early hour and that you are training your body that a certain time is bedtime and that means sleep. This may take a while but you need to work on your sleep hygiene. I, I will also do a separate video on that, but there are videos on that on the Health Recovery channel by James. So you can go and have a look at that. In the meantime, I'll link it all below. So that all aside, what has been the best treatment for me so far? The best treatment for me so far has been only the treatments that I have muscle tested for. 
It's as simple as that. I started with the antibiotic protocol, which was a very specific protocol by a lady whose father was a professor. He's been studying these infections for years and years and years. And she has a protocol that she's been using for years and years and years and years. And a lot of people claim that it really, really helped them or a lot of people claim that they've actually been cured by it. I have a family friend who said that it, it did cure her for it would be 13 years now. And she's gone on to have children and live a happy, healthy life. And that's actually why I went to this doctor and took on this protocol. But I didn't know about muscle testing at the time and it was not the protocol for me. In fact, it was absolute hell for me. It was, I have no words. It was absolute hell. My body was just too weak. I couldn't take it. It had the most terrifying, horrifying side effects. I was in the ER every other day. It was just incredibly, incredibly difficult. And I did that for 11 months. So I was basically abusing my body for 11 months. It did kill around 15% of my Lyme because I did muscle tests at a later stage, but still that's not enough for 11 months. And it also wasn't addressing other factors. It wasn't addressing my SIBO. It wasn't addressing my parasites. So I think that that also played a big role. The other treatment that I tried that I did not muscle test for because I wasn't in the same country as my muscle tester was the hypothermia treatment in Germany. And that too was a massive disappointment and complete waste of money on my part. Honestly, it's one of the biggest disappointments in my life. If you watched my video where I talk about it, you can see that I was highly upset. The interesting thing though is when I muscle tested at a later stage, that treatment actually did kill some other bacteria and viruses within my body, just random ones. So that's really interesting. So that's why I felt a bit better afterwards, but then I quickly declined. And I really believe that everything happens for a reason and that I've taken the journey that I have for a reason. So who knows, maybe there was a factor that was addressed with that treatment. It just didn't touch my Lyme and it wasn't my full answer. But the treatments that I've been led to through muscle testing have been my most effective treatments. And that has been using the right machine, taking certain herbals that I muscle test positive for, and those herbals were for addressing not just the Borrelia, all sorts of things going on in my body. And then also disulfiram is something that I muscle tested very strongly for. And that has been a very big step forward in my treatment so far. Then I do the keto diet. I use all organic products. One thing that I don't do that I should do is filter my bath and shower water because it has a lot of chlorine in it. So that's something that I am looking at doing is getting a filter. And the other thing that I don't do is eat fully hormone and antibiotic free meats because it's so expensive. But that's something that I really want to be able to do in the future. And it is a goal for me <laughs> to be able to live a completely clean life where I am able to eat hormone antibiotic free meats and things like that. And I think I will get there, we all will. A little update on how I'm doing. I'm actually doing pretty well. I'm getting there, I'm making progress. So fingers crossed that it carries on this way and we'll actually be moving house in about a week. So I look forward to that as well. And I'll report back on how that all goes because as you know, that's a lot of work. So I hope that I'll be able to have the strength to do it. It'll be a really good test. So just a little recap, of course you can heal your body. Your body is designed to heal. It's like a healing machine. You just need to do the research and stay informed and have the right information that will equip you to do so. And you just have to work with your body and trust your body more than anything else, including trusting your intuition. I also think it's really great to listen to other people's stories and to see what works for them, but to not take their word as the golden word. Even the videos that I do about my treatments and the things that I share, I just share them so that people are informed and they have the information at hand. But I obviously don't know everything and I'm on a journey discovering things that I'm sharing as I go. And I think that it would be great if everyone could share what works for them. And within our community, we help each other and 
to gather as much information as we possibly can because there's just not that information out there and the medical industry just doesn't treat this way. It's designed to treat symptoms, it's not designed to treat the actual cause and it's not designed to heal the whole body and it doesn't see the body as all the systems being connected there's a separate doctor for the heart a separate doctor for the lungs a separate doctor for the stomach and so on when in fact you cannot separate the human body everything is completely connected including our mental health and our emotional health so that's why we are our best friends when it comes to healing and we are responsible for educating ourselves and gathering as much information as we possibly can and then working with our bodies and our incredibly intelligent subconscious minds to figure this out and to get onto the right path for our own individual healing. I feel like I have so much more to say on this topic because really you can talk forever on it, but this video has already gone too long, so I will spare you and I'll keep sharing. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful and you're enjoying watching my journey and would like to follow my journey, please do press the red subscribe button below and make sure that your notifications are turned on. A lot of people do message me and ask me where my latest video is and that they can't find my latest video and they ask me for updates. It's always best to just be following so that you can get notified whenever I post a new video because I'm going to be posting a lot more in the upcoming future. And please also let me know your thoughts below in the comment section. See you next time. Bye.